Hi everyone, this is your instructor Asma Mushtaq and in today's lecture I'll explain the difference between what are the prime implicants and the essential prime implicants while simplifying the function using the Carnot or KMAP. So let's start uh, with a very simple example of a four variable KMAP where you have placed the min terms in the K map already and the purpose is to sim obtain this simplified boolean expression uh, now you can see there are uh, min terms placed already here in the K map and we have to actually determine a function that will be consisting of minimum number of the possible literals before starting that Let's see what are the prime implicants. So the prime implicants of a function can be obtained from the map by combining all the possible maximum number of the squares which will always be of the order of 2 raised to power n. This means that a single one on a map represents a prime implicant if it is not adjacent to any other ones. Okay, two adjacent ones form a prime implicant provided that they are not within a group of four adjacent squares. All right. And what will be the essential prime implicants? The essential prime implicants are formed by looking at each square marked with a one and Checking the number of the prime implicants that cover it. Okay. So I will show with an example how many there are possible ways according to which you can actually combine these squares. Fine. So starting with this, I will combine these four ones in the last row. And for this, I'll get the function expression like f is equal to, since we are in the same row, and in this row, a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0. That's why a will be represented as it is, while b will be represented as a complemented number. Fine. And while changing or moving through the columns, you can see c and d are all time changing. That's why we will not write c and d in the representation of this expression okay the next term that you can combine is this so i will try to cover maximum number of ones within a k map fine now we are in the same column where c and d both are equal to one so that's why they they will be written as c and d and while moving through these rows a and b are all time changing that's why we don't write them fine the next possible combinations that we can combine are this square box or these four ones and while combining these squares you can see a is changing from 0 to 1 so that's why we will not be writing a and b remains as it is and its value is equal to 1 that's why I will write it B and then moving from one column to another column C is changing from 0 to 1 we will not write it as per the Carnot mal rule and D is equal to 1 so the next term is BD fine the remaining ones are at the corners that's why we can actually fold this K map and these corners will be forming a square again while writing the expression you can see a is changing from 0 to 1 while b is 0 that's why you will write it as b complement and similarly while moving from this column to another column c is actually changing and d is equal to 0 hence we will have d complement fine so this is the first possible combination in the k-map that you can use for generating this expression now let's see another possible combination okay you can see as we have to combine the maximum number of ones so the first 
approach can be if I do combine these four adjacent squares and for this the function expression will be I am writing over here here a is constant a remains as it is 1 while b is changing from 1 to 0 that's why I will not write b and we will write the first term as a and similarly while switching the columns you can see c is changing from 0 to 1 that's why we will not write c and d remains 1 hence the first term will be d a d the next uh, step is to combine these four ones all right while combining these four ones you can see the next term that we will have b and then d okay similarly you can combine these four ones at the corner one two three and four and in this case the term that you will be getting is actually b complement and d complement now we are left with only this one and we will again try to merge it with maximum possible square so i will merge these two ones with these two ones and the term again will be b complement since a is changing from 0 to 1 and then c remains as it is and as its value is equal to 1 so we will have b complement c this is the second possible expression that we can get while simplifying this function using kmap now let's see another approach according to which we can merge these ones uh, again i'll combine first these consecutive blocks and this will generate f is equal to b d term okay similarly i will combine again these four consecutive blocks and i'll have a d term fine the next step is to combine these ones okay so you will have the next term as c d and the remaining ones that you can combine are fine and in this way you will get the term b complement and d complement all right so you can see you have generated three different possible expressions so far so this is bd bd b complement b complement ad ad and then here they both are differing by the term b complement c and cd now let's see the last possible combination that we can obtain okay now let's have a look uh, how we can do the last possible arrangement of this function or the variables so i'll writing its expression over here fine i hope it's visible so let's say f is equal to the first term that we will get is equal to a b complement fine uh, similarly uh, let's combine these ones in the column and you will have the expression this is equal to c d fine then plus the last uh, sorry the second last possible combination is this and you can clearly see from here you can have b and then d term fine all right okay uh, looking at this last ex uh, expression again you can combine these four adjacent squares and hence you will get the term b d this is fine and similarly you can combine these 
consecutive ones and you will get the term CD fine so this is also fine it's also correct and uh, then the next step is to combine these fours okay so by combining these fours one uh, these four ones you can get the expression B complement D complement fine and the next step is to combine these consecutive four ones rather than combining them with a straight line you will do that and hence you will get the expression a b sorry a and then d all right so you can clearly see there are two terms that are common in almost every expression that are basically bd plus bd complement similarly bd b complement d complement and again here you can see bd plus b complement d complement and in the last expression again you can see we got the terms bd plus b complement d complement so whenever you drive an expression for the k from the k map and the terms that are present in every function expression are actually called the essential prime implicants because they are essential for the representation of this function and the remaining implicants are ab complement cd ad and then ad and c complement cd fine so i hope you got the idea of what's the difference between the prime implicants and the essential prime implicants thank you for watching